Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're going to review the Royal Clutch 860 or RK100. This is a triple mode connection enabled, 96% layout, mechanical keyboard. This is one of the latest iterations of the mechanical keyboard line of Royal Clutch on the pre-built enthusiast level. It's jam-packed with features, lesser seen in premium mechanical keyboards, but with a very affordable price point. Well, in comparison to the other boards at this price point. I have both the hot swap and the non hot swap variants and we'll tackle the slight differences between the two. Let's get into the details. So, opening the box, we see the keyboard itself, a USB Type C cable, a keycap puller, and a key switch puller. Save for the non hot swap version, which does not come with the key switch puller. The packaging is okay, but to be expected at this price point. Hoping they do improve on this to get better production during shipping. The keycaps are PBT double shot which means the legends will not fade due to the molding process. And surprisingly, some of the sub-legends seem to be die sublimated and will also not fade. But the rest are painted with a protective coating on top. The overall construction is very sturdy with minimal deck flex. The case is plastic, probably ABS material. It is flimsy without the plate, but overall, very sturdy as one piece. And the plate is made of metal, aluminum. The plate is painted with some kind of anti-scratch coating that is quite resistant to scratches that is common with hot swap boards. I've dealt with other hot swap boards before and I've thoroughly tested removing the switches and replacing them enough times to attest to the quality of the paint job. Not bad for this price point. The stabilizers are plate mounted stabilizers, very easy to remove if you have the hot swap variant. They come factory lubed and don't sound half bad stock. The ones I got had a little scratch and rattle on them, nothing a little tuning can fix. The switches can also come factory lubed, so make sure to double check with the merchant as I received my extra hot swap version that I ordered from another vendor on lube. Under the case, there are two side switches, one for turning the keyboard on and off, and another for switching between Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz connectivity. There's also four rubberized feet for gripping the table or desk mat, and also two flip-up feet for a secondary typing angle. You can also find a magnetic cutout channel where you can store your 2.4 GHz USB dongle connector. The hot swap sockets on the hot swap variant are custom made from Royal Pledges designers and engineers. They differ vastly from the Kale hot swap sockets and Gunneron hot swap sockets that I'll be showing on the screen now.
compared to the one-piece construction of the former sockets, these RK hot swap sockets, as we'll call them, are actually two pieces of metal that are soldered on the pinholes. The pinholes have some additional solder around the sockets, and they also added 5-pin compatibility for switches. You'd still have to consider SMD compatibility though, as the light diodes are not flush with the board. Both variants have a 3600 milliamp battery to power the keyboard on wireless. Personal testing of the battery amounted to 7 days with lights and almost 13 days without lights. Of course, your mileage may vary. On to the difference between the hot swap keyboard and non hot swap. As you can see, the shortcut keys are laid out a bit differently. The calculator shortcut has been moved from F12 to F4 on the hotswap version. The media keys have been moved from F5 to F7 to F6 to F9. The volume shortcuts are a bit jumbled on the non-hotswap version, having the volume up first rather than volume down, and the mute volume last. The dead giveaway you can see at first glance is the light indicators. As you can see, the non-hotswap version has Windows and Mac light indicators, while the hotswap version has Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz connectivity indicators instead. Did I mention the triple mode connectivity? Yes, this keyboard has three connectivity modes. You can go wide, Bluetooth, or 2.4 GHz lossless connectivity. Of course, out of the three, the most stable is wired allowing for the full N key rollover to take effect. Next would be the 2.4 GHz lossless connectivity, which will perform absolutely great during gaming sessions without fear of spotty connections or random disconnections. Coming up last is the Bluetooth connection, which both variants have Bluetooth 5. But surprisingly, the hotswap version also has Bluetooth 3 included. I've tried to test the Enki rollover with the wireless options, and it seems it is not limited to a small number. The most number of switches I managed to actuate at the same time was around 50 without making my PC go crazy during testing. Further testing is required, so take this with a grain of salt. I am not sure if there is a separate chipset for the Bluetooth versions, as I am not yet adept at visually locating the components on the PCB, but both show up as BT5.0KB and BT3.0KB for the hot swap version. I assume this was so the keyboard was backwards compatible with older systems and operating systems, and indeed, according to the online manual, it is exactly just like that. It is unfortunately only in Chinese, so, Google Translate is your friend. Before we continue on, I would like to give a massive thank you to Yang Shuo and GXG Movement in Shenzhen for providing an express highway to order these keyboards so shortly after launch. Another huge thanks to Yangshu PH for providing the plate dampeners that I use on all of my builds. And to the Deskmat Foundry for the awesome Mayon Deskmat featured in this video. Make sure to check them out on the links that will be appearing on your screen now. Moving forward, I will be working with Zion Studios for future builds and will be working with them on more projects behind the scenes in the foreseeable future. Back to the video. Another slight difference of the variants. The non swap board support up to 5 device simultaneous switching, while the hot swap version can only go up to 3. The reason for the difference might be the dual-channel Bluetooth. This is of course purely speculation as there isn't any clue on the documentation online. The shortcuts for Bluetooth switching are located on the QWERTY row. Lighting modes are available, 
and have 20 pre-built on the board. There is support for custom light mapping via the combination of the FN button and the 123 keys. Select the mapping you want to remap. Press FN and Home buttons to start recording. And press FN and Home again to save. Light intensity can be adjusted using the FN plus arrow keys. And you can toggle Windows key on and off. Unfortunately, only white backlight is available, so no RGB for the RGB gamers out there. There is news of a new lineup with all of these features plus RGB, but of course I'd need to show it for you guys to believe it. Macro recording is supported, but only on the non-hot swap version. This was a feature I was not able to review on the non-hot swap variant as I only had a few days to film and was not able to capture how it works. I'll link down below the manuals where I have found the functionality documented. And now, for the moment you guys have all been waiting for, the sound tests. I will be doing both a stock and modded version of the keyboards. Go ahead and have a listen.
Overall, I like this new 96% lineup Royal Pledge has going on. This layout gives me access to most of the keys on the keyboard, and it's compact, almost the same size as a TKL keyboard. I can take it with me on the go, and will definitely hold its own in a desk office or gaming setup. The inclusion of the 2.4GHz connectivity is a godsend feature, as my personal workspace is quite littered with RF pollution, with various other Bluetooth devices and signals, so it helps with its strong signal and consistent experience during work and gaming sessions. If you plan to set up your wireless workspace or gaming desk, consider this mid-cost pre-built mechanical keyboard for your needs. It's very versatile and will most likely cater to whatever you need. Make sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe to this channel for new video releases. Tune in live on Facebook or Twitch in the links you see here for all that keyboard goodness and gaming activities. Thanks for watching through the end of this review, and we'll see you in the next.